as I bring greetings to the saints and the believers in the congregation, all those that constitute this great army called Deliverance Church International Zimmerman. As we celebrate this great that nine years of God's manifest presence and activity in this locality of Zimmerman. Because surely the eye has seen and the eye can see and the ears can hear what the Lord has done and great things he is doing. In those that nine years, in Zimmerman and Kasarani Roisabu areas, the name of Deliverance Church and the mission of Deliverance Church has continued to vibrate and resonate in every house. And for that account, we celebrate Bishop Jimmy Kemani and Leverend Alice, Pastor Alice, for their persistent and consistent faith that God started a good work in them for your benefit and my benefit. Because as the word of God says, they that are planted in the house of their God, they will prosper in the courts of their God. I stand here as a testimony, brethren, that for the nine years and behold, I have been drinking from this fountain. I may not be here every Sunday with you. I may not be here every Wednesday with you. But I have drank from this altar. On which Pastor Bishop Jimmy Kimani and Pastor Harris minister. And I want to encourage you, brethren, that it is not in vain to serve the Lord. It is not in vain for you to make a decision and decide that I will not be a statistic in the church. I will not just be a number in the church. But I will be a participant in the things that God is doing. Because when you are a participant, you become a beneficiary of the greetings, of the, of the blessings. Even today as we celebrate also the leaders past and present for supporting the vision in this house. That even though challenges have come, they have clung to the vision of this house. And that is why we are here today celebrating. We will dance and we will celebrate and sing the faithfulness of God. And we want to celebrate as well the families that constitute this assembly. Because a church is as strong as it's the families that make it up. And as we celebrate the families and the struggles and the challenges that you have gone through, thanks be to God who always gives us victory. As we raise our children, that we are creating altars around our homes and we are discipling them and raising up in the fear of God occasionally they might go away once in a while but because of the investment that you have already done in their lives families of deliverance church Zimmerman and beyond that your investment I want to assure you that your investment of time and resources in your kingdom is not in vain. 
and particularly as you connect them to this altar where they will be nourished where they will be fed and I am a testimony and a witness of that we celebrate deliverance church and as families I want you to know because today as well is your family day and we are glad this is a great honor Bishop Jimmy that I should come and just from far and just join in and fellowship with you on your family day. And I want to remind you that the message of the church is a holistic message that, that, that deals with the issues of life everyday challenges and your spirituality. In the book of Luke chapter 4, 18 and 9 to 19, where Jesus said in the temple, the spirit of God is upon me because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. I am telling you, my brothers and my sisters, it is the gospel of the kingdom that creates a sustenance of life. It is the gospel of the kingdom that sets the poor free by empowering them to make wealth. And as I testify of that brethren, I want to tell you I have tested this gospel and I have known it is real. I have walked this walk of faith and I know it pays and it is real. As bishops alluded before, we have come from very far. We grew up in mud houses. We read and did our homework on the fireside so that we can use the, the flames. And we had another instrument called nitra. Nitra was a candle. Uh, and, and if you coughed, you, you switch it off. And then we come to Zimmerman to, to do the work of the ministry because Bishop Kemani that time as a pastor he has a vision and a dream for this area as an instrument for the kingdom of God and we stand behind him and the mud that we left at home found us in Zimmerman we found ourselves in a pig pen across the street but our hearts were not confined to the pig pen because the dreams in us were bigger than our circumstances I think only one of us was driving then just one but within a few years, all of us were driving because of the faithfulness of God. I want to tell you, friends, when you support a vision of a man of God that is stopping from the heavenly portal, your families will be established. By a prophet, God delivered the children of Israel from Egypt. And by a prophet, he sustained them in the wilderness and gave them prosperity when the gospel is preached lives are transformed today what we have come to say is come and see the great things the Lord has done in this region when he found a man to start in the gap Times and seasons have changed. Methods of evangelism and outreach have changed. Needing new strategies for outreach. The grounds on which we used to do crusades are no longer there. But 
still evangelism must be done lakini uijirisi sharti ufanyike because jesus is the same yesterday kwa sababu yesu ndiye yule jana today and forevermore leo na hata milele with the same mandate to preach the gospel of the kingdom tukona ule wito wa kuhubiri ijili ya ufalme and having all that changes changes done na mabao yote yakishabadilika We must change our strategies. Lazima tubadilishe how are we going to reach the new generation? Tunatawafikiaje kizazi kipya? How are we going to reach the young people? Je, wale watu wachanga tuwafikia jinsi gani? Because we can be confined in a church building. Kwa sababu tunaweza kuwa tumefungwa pale katika jengo la kanisa. And lose a whole generation. Na tupoteze kizazi kisima. And thereafter come a generation that no no God know their works. Know the works of God. Kingine, mungu wala kazi zake. And so I want to say this morning. Na kwa hivyo nikataka kusema asubuhi leo. That our God is a God of strategy. Kwamba Mungu wetu ni Mungu wa mpangilio. And God has a purpose for you and a plan na Mungu akao na mpango na kusudi yako after you come into this altar and you are equipped baada ya kukuja hapa katika madhabahu na unawezeshwa i want to remind you that you are equipped for the work of ministry nataka kukukumbusha kwamba umewezeshwa kwa sababu ya kazi ya huduma and the work of ministry is to pour yourself out na kazi ya huduma ni wewe kujitoa that which you have received from the lord Kira through abato, this ministry umekipokea kutoka kwa Mungu kuhusu huduma hii so that out there you are a witness ili pale nje ukue shahidi of the things that god has done ya mambo ambayo Mungu ameyafanya today i want us to think about god increase your capacity for your blessings kwa bana leo nataka tutafakari mambo ya increase your capacity for your blessings kuongezwa uwezeshaji wako kwa sababu in the book of genesis chapter 1 and verse 28 ka mwanzo moja 28 the bible says and god bless them and said Mungu akawabariki na akasema Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and govern it. Reign over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, and all the animals that scurry along the ground. What that meant is this brethren. Hili limaanisha hili wadogo. That God has empowered you. Baba Mungu amekuwezesha that unless you partner with him and until he uses you to bless yourself you cannot be blessed god has empowered men god has empowered you a to be fruitful and to multiply and that is god's plan you have been empowered to take responsibility personally for nobody can do it for you nobody will raise your children for you nobody will do business for you Nobody will take care of your bills at home. Na hakuna mtu atagaramikia mambo yako nyumbani. God has created you and given you the power. Mungu amekuumba na amekupatia uwezo. That you take personal responsibility. Ili uchukue uwajibikaji wako binafsi. Because he knows the thoughts that he has towards you. Kwa sababu anajua mawazo anayokuwazia wewe. And he knows the future that he has for you. Na anajua mstakabali wako. And even then he says in the book of Jeremiah 29 and verse 12. Na anazidi kusema katika Yeremia 29. Kutoka 11 hadi 13. That God he knows the plans that he has for you. Kwa sababu anajua mawazo anayokuwazia. He wants to give you a future. Anataka kukupatia maisha yako ustakabali. He wants all good things for you. Na anakutakia mambo yote mazuri yako. But he says if you sit and wait lakini anasema unapogojea na kusubiria and do nothing about it na usifanye chochote kulihusu that god is not going to do anything for you kwamba yeye hatafanya chochote kwako if you want anything from god iwapo unahitaji chochote kutoka kwake that you must participate with him lazima ukue mhusika pamoja naye he says Seek me and you will find me. Anasema nitafute na utanipata. When you seek me with all your heart. Ukimtafuta kwa moyo wako wote. That means you must be willing to invest yourself. Ina maanisha lazima uwekeze katika wewe. You must be willing to invest your time. Na uwekeze muda wako. You must be willing to invest your resources. Na iweze kuwezeka marasimali zako. 
because God can do all things. Kwa sababu Mungu anaweza fanya mambo yote. But God is limited by your faith and your understanding of him. Lakini yeye amesitiliwa na kuelewa kwako na imani yako kumhusu. You limit God. Ni kwamba unamhitaji Mungu. By the things by your understanding of what God can do. Unamzuia Mungu kwa kuelewa kwako ya mambo ambayo Mungu anaweza kufanyia. In the book of Psalms 78. Zaburi 78 41-42 The Bible talks about the children of Israel. God delivered them from Egypt so that he would take them to Canaan land. So that they would get to a destiny that he had planned for them. For he had said I will deliver you. But after delivering them, the Bible says again and again, they tempted God and limited the whole one of Israel. I want to remind you today that our God is not limited to do anything in your life. But you can limit God to the level of your understanding. Your perception of God and his ability. The, your willingness to surrender to God. So that God can be in your life. And that you can follow him. That one will determine the things that God will do in your life. Verse 42 says this. They did not remember his power. The day when he redeemed them from the enemy. My brothers and my sisters. Today as we celebrate. As you celebrate your graduation. As you graduate Whatever success God has given you. I want to tell you that the greatest danger that can bury your future is getting stuck in your success. And today I came to tell you this. That open your eyes to the unlimited power and resources of God because God has a horizon and those things are reserved for you but how does that happen it only happens when you believe it only happens when you do what God says you do in the book of Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6 Hebrews 11 and verse 6. The Bible says he who comes to God must believe that he is. And that is a reward of them that seek him and seek him diligently. That means as believers believe as you come to God. And as you come to God you believe that he exists. Even the reality of the presence that comes as is not withstanding. And you believe that God is able to do what you believe he is able to do. Because all that God wants is you to partner with him. And that our God is a rewarder. Turn to your neighbor and tell him my God is a rewarder. My God is a rewarder. There is nothing my brothers and my sister. Your energies and your resources. And even yourself that you would do for nothing for God. You know sometimes people say it's nothing about me it's only God. I, 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 I'm going for the prayer meeting but I was not feeling like it I am only going it for God the Bible says if you don't do it by faith it is sin for everything that is done without faith is sin and so as you come to a place of worship 
Give substance to why you are doing that. Tell God myself I am doing this because I want something for my son. I am doing this because of my child. I am doing this because of my stubborn husband. I am doing this because give substance to your faith. Because when you give substance to your faith, it is only then that you begin to partner with God. At other times it's your opinion and God does not reward opinion. God rewards faith. Take it upon yourself and make a move. And God will move with you. If you don't move towards anything, God will not move with you. How do you increase your capacity? How do you create room for your blessings? And God Ha, so that God can come in. You must hunger. You must hunger. And you must thirst. What is this that you are passionate about and you are believing God for? Our God deals with men and women at the point of their, their desperation. In Matthew chapter 5 and verse 6. The Bible says, Blessed are those who hunger and thus for righteousness. For they shall be filled. Blessed are not the fool. Blessed are those that have space to be fed and to be filled. God is inviting us to a space of hunger. Hunger for the righteousness of God. Hunger for the integrity of the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hunger for the gospel that is preached and convicts the drunk addicts and the drunkards. A gospel that is preached and a community is transformed. What is the level of your hunger? What is the level of your thirst? Because proportionate to your hunger. Our unlimited God is ready to fill you. So that as we celebrate that nine years of Deliverance Church Zimmerman, you look forward to celebrating 39 years of your marriage, 39 years of accounts of Working with your children in faith. 39 years since God did something in your life. As I was seated there, I remembered something. And I wrestled with it to ask myself, will I give this testimony or not? Finally, I decided I will give it. Because this is what the Lord did and I want you to know. Maana. The faithfulness of God if you put your faith in it. Maana, in 1990, in 1992, uh, my wife and I wanted to go and build somewhere. But the Lord said no. And he said it's because I have something else for you. And so one Saturday afternoon I told my wife let us take a matatu and go to Kahawa West towards Kahawa West. We got to a place called Maziwa and we stopped there. Why we alighted there I don't know. 
It was a coffee plantation then. But as we alighted, we went in. And when we entered in, I told my wife, immediately we stepped the ground. I told my wife, the Lord wants to give us property here. And I had called a friend of mine, Patrick. And I had told them who the, the, I had told him the problem the, 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 what the Lord had spoken to me. So as we entered in there, I found a lady working on a flower bed. And I told her we have come here and we are coming for land. And as we discussed with her, she told us, what land are you looking for? The Lord said he would give us land here. I, and then she said, well, I don't know. But as we conversed, somebody appeared from this. And his name was Kangara. And, and the lady was Sabina. Said, come and hear what these people are saying. And Kangara came. And I told him, the Lord has told me and my wife that we have land here. And he said, but land here is, does not belong, it belongs to somebody. But I told him that is what the Lord has said. And we walked together. From that time we took a swell, a, a scoop of ground. And claimed it. And let me tell you friends. Walking with those people by faith. Within three and a half months. We got our land. And the rest is history. It was a step of faith. Not because I had conversed with anybody. But because the God I'm talking to you about is real. And for your faith you attach something. Bishop is talking about building the Shiro Center. When you bring your 100,000, your 50,000, give it a name and attach a promise of God. And when you attach a promise of God, I came to tell you that God is faithful. He will do exceedingly, abundantly and above that which you desire or claim Ask for. Here is our God. And I am telling you, as we come to celebrate the following year, you will come with a test of miracles. You will come with miracles. You will come with a testimony of the miracles that God has done in your life. Probably you have a challenge in your life, a health issue. Or your children. Or whatever it is that is nagging you. I want to tell you that this word is real. This gospel is real. This gospel is real. I, I have walked it. I am not suggesting. I am saying authoritatively that this gospel works. We are a family of faith. The Kiroko's family is a family of faith. And the Deliverance Church family is a family of faith. We believe and therefore we speak. And when we speak, God manifests himself. As God manifests himself, brethren, I want you to know we are in a battle. We are in a war. We are in a war for our faith. We are in a war for our children. And in that war, the Lord is telling us this. There are incremental miracles that God wants to do in your life. But the first thing that you must do, you must clearly identify your enemy. When you identify your enemy, 
Do not go alone. Form a player alliance. In conclusion, as we come to Natukihitimiza, I want us to go to the book of 2 Kings. Chapter 3 and verse 16 to 20. It is a story about a war that was to be waged in Israel. There was a king called Ahab who ruled Israel and was a very wicked king. And then his son Jehoram took over. And when he took over, a king called Mesha from Moab decided to go against uh, Israel. And so Jehoram sought for help from the king of Judah called Jehoshaphat. And when he went for that help, they, they formed an alliance and they agreed they were going to attack Mesha, the king of Moab, uh, through uh, the territory of Edom. And so now they also sought, sought counsel from the three, from the other other king, and they became three kings. And as they decided to go and attack this this king that wanted to attack Israel. They walked for about seven days. And after they walked for seven days, they ran out of their provisions. And as they ran out of their provisions, they began to seek what they would do. And as they were seeking what to do, uh, Jehoram turned to Jehoshaphat. And told Jehoshaphat, Jehoshaphat, the Lord God brought us from, told us to go and attack this king because God wanted to destroy us. But I like what Jehoshaphat, a man who had a fear of God, came up with. And he asked, isn't there a prophet in this neighborhood? Problems are upon us. Hunger is upon us. Thirst is upon us. But is there no prophet in our midst? Then one of the servants said, there is, a, there is one prophet in our midst. And his name is Elisha. Who poured water in the hands of Elijah. In times of your difficulties, in times of your dry seasons, and you are in this region and you are looking for a prophet, and you are in this region and you are looking for an altar, I want to tell you that there is a bomb in this place. And the doors are open for you to come and pray. And the doors are open for you to come and seek the Lord. That you are not a Sunday Christian. You are not a Wednesday Christian. But you are consistently a believer in the Lord. Uh, in the passage that we read, uh, 2 Kings 3, from verse 16, please put it on the screen. And Elisha then is in, uh, comes to tell the kings. That says the Lord God, make this valley full of ditches. For that says the Lord, you shall 
you shall not see wind nor shall you see rain hautaona upepo wala mvua yet that valley shall be filled with water so that your cattle and your animals may drink ili wanyama wako waweze kunywa maji brethren i want to challenge you today ndugu nataka kuwapatia changamoto leo that you enlarge your capacity to receive God's blessings. Kwa hivyo uandae sehemu yako iwezekaji ili kupokea baraka za Bwana. I am bwana. challenging you to dig ditches and get laden. Nakwambia uchibe mitana na ukue tiyari. Arise and fight for your destiny. Inuka na usipigane kwa sababu ya upeo wako. Fight for the destiny of your children. Pigania upeo wa watoto fight wako. Fight for the destiny of your of your family na upigania upeo wa jamii yako because nobody will do it for you kwa sababu hakuna mtu atafanya kwa niaba yako the pain of losing your family only you who knows uchungu wa kupoteza jamii yako ni wewe tu unajua be a fighter like daniel ukuwa mpiganaji kama danieli be a fighter like gideon na ukuwa mpiganaji kama gideon for god is with you kwa sababu mungu yu pamoja nawe prepare for times of famine ajiandae kwa sababu ya wakati wa kiangazi because when danger comes kwa sababu hatari inapokuja when you are prepared wakati uko tayari you will be able to overcome utaweza kushida how do you prepare unajiada vipi you must be an avid reader of the word of god shati ukue msomaji wa neno la mungu kumaanisha my mother passed away last year a mamangu nikampoteza mwaka uliopita at the age of 87 kwa miaka akiwa na miaka 87 and she had a reading program for the bible for one once a year na alikuwa analisoma biblia mara moja kwa mwaka i want to challenge you brethren nataka kutia changamoto do that in order for the word of god to become a bulwark or a strength for you in times of challenges na ili neno la bwana likuwe nguvu yako wakati wa shida let it be a part of your being wacha ikuwe sehemu yako yako read the word of god usome neno la mungu when you read the word of god unaposoma neno la mungu Commit yourself to prayer. Ujitoe kupitia maombi. Commit yourself to prayer. Na ujitoe maombi. For it is the only avenue that has been given for you ba- to commune with God. Bana ni ile jia tu imetolewa yako kunena pamoja na Mungu. Enlarge your tents. Ni kwamba upanue heme zako. Prepare yourself for great things. Jiandae kwa sababu ya mambo makuu. For God is ready to burst your territory. Kwa sababu Mungu wako kwa tayari kuziidisha miliki zako. In the book of Isaiah 54 verse 23 Isaiah si 54:4 The Bible says enlarge the place of your tent. Biblia inasema upanue hali yako ya hema zako. Let them stretch out. Uzipanue kabisa sehemu za hizo. Let the curtains of your dwellings be stretched. Na katika mahali pako pa kukaa papanuliwe. How is that going to happen? Hilo litafanyika vipi? In the book of Psalms 144 and verse 1. Zaburi 144 mstari wa kwanza. The Bible says blessed be the Lord my rock. Biblia inasema abarikiwe Mungu wangu ugao rangu. Who trains my hand my hand for war. Abaye anafunza mikono yangu kupigana. As you expand, na unapopanuka, prepare for battle. Jiandae kwa sababu ya vita. Prepare for battle. Jiandae kwa sababu ya vita. Because we have a warfare sababu tunao vita za kupigana we have an enemy to fight tunao adui wa kupigana naye in our schools katika shule zetu we have an enemy to fight in our homes tunao adui wa kupigana naye nyumbani kwetu we have the money hungry people to fight Tuna... that are giving us all kinds of stuff kuna watu ambao tupigana nao ambao wanatuletea mambo ya aina zote but thanks be to god who always gives us victory lakini shukrani kwa mungu ambaye anatupatia kila wakati ushindi if you find yourself alone ukijipata kuwa peke yako in the family katika jamii don't forget the power of one usisahau nguvu za kuwa kuwa peke yako because on account of jehoshaphat kwa sababu ya oshafati the battle against the moabites was won vita ambayo ilikuwa ni ilikuwa dhidi ya moabi na ilishinda the provisions were provided na kwa sababu wakatwaliwa rasimali On account of Noah humanity was saved. Kwa sababu ya mambo ya kibinadamu akaokolewa. Be willing to take responsibility. Ukue tayari kuwajibika. Choose this day. Chagua siku hii. Whether to take your shovel. Ni kwamba utachukua kifaa chako or a pacifier. Ama utachukua kifaa cha aina nyingine. Kinyonyo ile ile inatumiwa na watoto. Ile munyonyi. Eh inaitwa munyonyi. <laughs> You must choose today. Uamue siku ya leo. What you are going to choose? Leo utatumia nini? For your future. Kwa sababu ya mstakabali. For your future you must be willing to work. 
you must be willing to plow yourself and when you plow yourself and whatever you do by faith the Lord will give you victory the Lord will give you victory as we are here today I know we have come we have come to celebrate. But as we celebrate, you could be having a problem and a challenge in your life. Probably you have been unwell for some time. But the Lord our God is our healer. And he heals all diseases. Our Lord God is a healer. And there is a balm in Gilead that makes the sin source Yo. Wherever Jesus went, the Bible says he was doing good and healing all manner of sickness. For you to be able to celebrate well, the Lord God is interested in your healing because you are the temple of the Lord. And when you are unwell, you cannot praise God and you cannot celebrate. And so if you are unwell, I want us to pray for you so that you can join the rest of us so that as we go into the celebrative mood you will enjoy what God has done and you will celebrate with others. Let us rise up. If you are sick and in, your midi, in our midst, the Lord our God wants to heal you. The Lord our God will restore you. And so if you are there, wherever you are, I want you to raise up your hand. I want you to raise up your hand. Let me tell you, the other day I was walking downtown Nairobi and somebody approached me and told me, are you pastor... Yes, I said, yes, I am. I, I had a back pain for many years. I always went bending. But when you prayed for us, Jesus healed me. And I, and I asked, where were you when I prayed for you? And she said, I was in Zimmerman Deliverance Church. A face that I did not know or recognize. And so I want to tell you this, brethren. That we are bringing to you a message of God that works. Lays up your hand wherever you are. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. I want to thank you for the men and women that are believing in you. That you are our God and our healer. That you will touch them on account of their faith. And by faith they shall be healed. And by faith they shall be restored. I pray for a restoration of the functions of their body. In the name of Jesus Christ. Be healed. Receive your healing. Receive your deliverance. Receive your restoration. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Receive your healing. And on Sunday as you come to church. Or before the end of the service. Write a note. Let it be passed to the office. What a petition of his but the Lord performed a miracle in your life. Because I know there are men and women that have been healed in our midst and we need that testimony that our God is a wonder working God and he's a healer. So write it down and bring it so that it can be read for the others to be built up. If you have a problem with your business, we are living through very econo hard economic times. But I want to tell you that our God knows not dry seasons. He prospered Joseph in a time of famine. He prospered Isaac 
in a time of famine. So whatever challenges your business is going through, I am praying that God will give you strategies. I am praying that God will download to you a wisdom, a knowledge that is unknown. Raise up your hand. Raise up your hand. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, the God of Abraham, the God of Jacob, the God of Isaac, the everlasting Father, these men and women are raising their hands because of their businesses. I pray that you will download the wisdom on high for their businesses, for their enterprises, that they shall prosper. They will do well in their businesses. Even in times of hardships, they will know how hardship because the Lord our God gives them power to make wealth and to create wealth. In Jesus' name. Now I want us to pray for families. I want us to pray for unity of family. I want to pray that every family in this under my voice. They will have a vision as a family. Where do you want to be in five years? As a husband and wife, where do you want to be in five years? Where do you see yourself in ten years? I want you to raise your hand. I want you to raise your hand. And I want to give you a moment to think about where you want to be. Probably today you are renting a, an apartment in Zimmerman or wherever else. I want you to itemize what you want God to do in your life. I am giving you that for you to be clear. And after this, I would want you, when you go home, in prayer, take a piece of paper and write down what you want God to do for you. In five years, in two years, as a husband and wife, as a family, so that you begin to fight it together, so that you begin to fight together, and telling the enemy, get your hands off my family, get your hands off my husband, get your hands of my wife because I am going to stand. I am going to stand. Raise up your hands. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I am committing the vision of these families to you, O oh God. That which they have desired, you have said in your word, you will give us the desires of our hearts. If we delight in you, Father, in Jesus' name I pray that these families will be established, that these families will prosper. They will prosper in this congregation. They will prosper in the courts of our God. Father, in Jesus' name, bless their finances, bless their marriages, protect the marriage bed, keep them well and keep them whole, preserve and share for their children. In in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for making us a family, for making us one. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Finally, finally, you are in our midst and you do not have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, whom I knew in my teenage years and has sustained me now, even in my prime years, I want to recommend to you in our midst just to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. If you are in our midst and you have never given your life to Jesus Christ and you are a stranger to the promises of God. I want to give you this opportunity. It is so sweet to trust in Jesus. If you are in our midst and you have never given your life to Jesus Christ, please raise up your hand. This is your day. This is your day. This is your day, is your day. to sign out of your challenges, to sign out of your desperation, to sign out of your pain, to sign out of your struggles because Jesus is Lord. Are you in our midst? 
and you have never given your life to Jesus Christ. I would want you to walk down here. I would want thank you, thank you, thank you. I would want you to walk down here and receive Jesus Christ. As your Lord and Savior. Are you in our midst? And you have never received Jesus Christ. As your Lord and Savior. We want to give you a moment. We want to give you a moment. If you make your decision. In the course of the service. Again, please slide your name. Because we would like you to be assisted. I believe they are ushers. And they will help you through that. And for now. You may sit down. Thank you so much. For this opportunity to share the word and rejoice in the goodness of the Lord. And uh, thank you so much, Bishop. And I'm behind you with the blocks.